Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to LinkedIn for August 24th, 2012. My name is Link, bringing you your community interaction and gaming discussions. To submit a question, please read the description below. In the background you will see you will see um, some League Spectator footage. Mostly because I worked on a project all day today and then I realized that it kind of didn't matter because it didn't work. Also, for my super secret project that I always keep hyping, um, I have about half the assets done. I need the, to do the recording, the research, and the editing. That's all I have left. I've gotten all the assets done, so I'm glad about that. Um, it'll be about five episodes. It's going to be a small series, and hopefully it does what I hope it does. As for anything else going on, I am trying to get my I Suck at League of Legends to be a show. Which means it'll sh well, it'll have an automatic playlist if you ever want to show your friends. It's only gonna be the newer episodes, the ones with the custom thumbnails, because I feel like I'm getting better than my pre my previous ones. Those will still be on their own playlist, the League of Legends daily pre uh, playlist. But I wanted to change them, so just for that, well, just to make it better. Okay, so enough of me babbling on about stuff. Let's get to the actual video. First, we have Nara with the question of, what type of jungler do you prefer? Junglers who are okay at jungling but have great ganks and early harassment, or do you like junglers who are great at jungling but the ganks are only good at late game? I forgot to give the examples, but the examples were Twitch for the early harassment and Sejuani for the good jungling. I've never seen a Sejuani jungle, so I'm not sure about that. Now. In my opinion, and for those who have seen me do my jungle videos, I like to jungle brawlers. The reason I like to jungle brawlers is, unless they have some sort of self-sustain, like Irelia's and Zhao, or what's another champion that has a great self-sustain that's a top, uh, Yorick, unless they have self-sustain, you should throw them in the jungle, because this puts a lot less stress on them and allows them more farm. And that's great, especially junglers like Jax and Lee Sin. You have high mobility, so you have pretty much everything. You have harassment, you've got great jungling, you have great ganks, you have great everything. Now, I think the only thing, the only issue is the clear time for those guys. But besides that, that's about what I think about for my junglers. I like brawlers that don't have self sustain, so pretty much great solo tops are going to be the essential. Now, what type of jungler do most people prefer? This isn't part of your question, but it's just kind of my own general question. I've seen people preferring junglers with better ganks and horrible late games than anything else. I.e., um, I've seen a Diana. She has great clearing, but early game, no ganks whatsoever. Once she reaches level 6, she still has gank potential. But she's not as strong as she should be, which I find to be very, well, interesting. She does have her one pull, which means that you have to make up that small amount of room first, but besides that, that's about all she has for her. And... really. But then you look at someone like a Mumu, who's got great clearing, great ganks, and a horrible, really, a really horrible late game, because you don't fill him with damage, you build him as a tank. Then you have Volibear Jungle, which, yes, that's actually a thing. I'm not making this up. And he's got great ganks, he's got great everything, but he has a horrible clear. There's no real perfect jungler at this point, although I'd have to say Rengar is a good option, but he got nerfed upon release, and right now he's pretty much poop. I mean, his, his nerf wasn't that big, but yet yeah, it is. All they did was lower the amount of... they lowered his base damage by one attack point per level, and they also... so that's 18 at max. They lowered his damage on his Q from 150 to 100, or 170 to 150, which, yet again, no big deal. And they um, made it where the where the speed buff was a percentage of um, it was double percentage instead of a flat percentage. But besides that, um, yeah, there's no real perfect junglers. I'd have to say some of the best are Lee Sin, Amumu, and anyone who can jump over walls. This increases their clear time, and also, if they can jump to a wall, they can probably jump to an enemy minion, or an enemy champion, which is great. Now, as for champions I don't think should ever be in the jungle, Fiddlesticks. 
how you guys are probably raging, like, eh, Fiddlesticks is a great jungler, why do you do this? Because I don't think he's that good. His ganks are poop. Enough said. Uh, it might be childish, but <laughs> they're bad. I've never seen a successful fiddle gank until level 6. Because he has to have that blink to get in there. Unless the person's close to the bush and he can land his spear, it's essentially useless. And, yeah. Uh, some other junglers, I think, that don't get enough, um, don't get enough, like, actual, like, play. I have to say, Xin Zhao jungle is rare now. After his buff, it should be more common because he has much more damage on his opening burst. And that is really what you're looking for with a great jungler. Then he has a CC along with his damage, and yeah. You can essentially rip a team to shreds with him. But he's a better solo top because he's got much more poking now than he used to. And he can also stop most people from counterbuilding him. You'd have to build damage to outbuild him, which is quite an interesting way to go out. Okay, so we're on to the second question from Mindlord, who we I think we've heard almost every week now. Or to every week. Every day now. What are the most exciting upcoming games in your opinion? Well, and on an unrelated note, what do you think of the Pokemon franchise? And do you think it's just a game for kids? Or does it hold its own as a game complex as a complex game that adults can enjoy as well? Great example of an adult enjoying that game is Chugga Conroy. That guy is a complete nerd for Pokemon, and honestly, I still play Pokemon. If I play, I mean I buy the new game, I get to the Elite Four, I beat the Elite Four, I find all the special legendaries, and then I put it away and it gathers dust. Now, I do have a competitive team in my Silver and in my... or sorry, my Sapphire and in my Soul Silver. I have those two competitive teams, and I'm waiting for Black 2 to come out to have a competitive team in that. Now, there's a competitive scene for that, believe it or not. You can go on YouTube and watch it. It's actually quite interesting, because it's actually, it's got a stronger meta than League of Legends. And, like, that's saying something. Like, you need to have, like, one of every... Like, you have to have a lot of people that counter... Like, you have to have Pokemon that counter themselves, mind you. And that's just... What? But as for it... As for me playing it, uh, yeah. As a game for kids, it's very simplistic, but it's got a really high learning curve, which it, it hides very well. Because, literally, after I grew up, like, I went back to my Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon, my original Pokemon Crystal. I went back and I'm like, how did I win with this team? And then I realized I'm ungodly overleveled, and that's how. Now, then, like, when I look at my Sapphire, because that's when I first realized that there was some sort of competitive nature, I... I seen that, like, wow, I was still bad at it. And then I, now I look at my Soul Silver. I'm like, this is a great, this is a great setup, and I have everything that counters everything. It's a nice competitive team. I got my physical wall. Got my, got my um, mag or my special attack wall. I've got my pure attack. I've got my speed. I've got my dodger, and I have my, I have my all around, which is normally. They're all around are normally, believe it or not, normal or ghost type, and you always have to have your bruiser, who is your normally your attack type, and he is normally a dragon. But off of the Pokemon meta, I haven't really touched that in a long time. Okay, so besides that, we can go to the topic that you were talking about. What game am I most excited for? Guild Wars 2. Why? Because Guild Wars 1. That's why. For those of you who don't know, um, Guild Wars 1, I pretty much have the God Walking Amongst Mere Mortals. Which, if you don't know what that is, that means I have, I think it's all but three titles in that game. And titles are pretty much accolades. A title in, I can't use League of Legends for an example. Yeah, I can. Pretty much a title would be, Kill Gragas 800 times. And you'd get, I don't know, Buzzkill. And you get to wear it on your champion when you walk around. That is essentially what. That's essentially what a title is. I mean, it's they're not that simple. Okay, how about this? Kill Baron Nasher solo 800 times. There you go. That's about how difficult they are. And once you get all those, you pretty much 
you beat the game. And I have one on my assassin, my assassin and I have got all the armor types, I've got a running build, I've got all this other stuff. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to Guild Wars 2, and I also, I'm getting a crap ton of free stuff, because if you, the Hall of Monuments calculator, if you Google that, um, you can type in, like, try, try Total Halibut's name, I'm not sure, but type in someone's name and you'll see all the rewards you get up to level 30. So I'm looking forward to getting all that free stuff. Although I'm kind of upset that I wasn't put into the beta when I have played that game pretty much since the second expansion, which was Factions. Because as soon as they release the Assassin, I'm like, oh my god, I want that game. Got the Assassin. He is my main, blah blah blah, long story short. And now he has everything in the game. <laughs> the only thing I don't, haven't done yet is beat the, last, beat the last dungeon by myself on hard mode. Which is where you pretty much you cap out at level 20. Those enemies cap out at level 33 and 34. So they've got like three times your health. <laughs> anyway, enough about that. Uh, another couple games I'm looking forward to. Torchlight 2. Oh my god. Torchlight 2. I really want that game. I, I'm addicted to Torchlight 1 because I just love dungeon crawlers and Torchlight 1 delivered that in spades. I literally never found myself bored with that game and it's just amazing. Also, I'm watching the um, replay right now while I'm recording this and I just realized that I think they have a Jack's Jungle. They do. Well, that's that. Proves my point that Jax is an awesome jungler. As he is going to die. Don't fit, but I don't know. Anyway, I, I gotta quit getting distracted. Uh, Torchlight 2, because Torchlight 1 was just amazing. Uh, what else? We're also looking at. Let's see, Guild Wars 2, Torchlight 2. What's the other game? I can't remember. Uh. It was on the tip of my tongue. Oh, CSGO. I know it's out, I think, already. But I was really looking forward to it, but I can't get it because... Well, I just can't get it. My account, like, I tried purchasing it, and it's like, Nope! Troll! Literally, like, a troll face popped out and was like, You can't buy my game. Or, You can't buy this game. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can buy it now, but I'll try. That's a game I'm really looking forward to, because... One... I used to mod for CS, well, Counter-Strike 1.6, well, Counter-Strike Source, either way. I used to mod for that with my friend, and yeah, I got kind of into it. As for the competitive scene on that, never. Uh, some other upcoming games I'm looking forward to. Why can't I remember? Let's see, Tower Wars, uh, that game already got released. There's no real other games I'm looking forward to. I'm not looking forward to Z DayZ because, well, <laughs> I really don't think I'll enjoy it. I enjoy games where you have to be analytical, and also that's another reason I enjoy or Oriana, I'm going to enjoy Syndra and Cassiopeia, but, like, I just don't, I enjoy games where you have to be analytical, but I don't enjoy games where it's forced upon you. Which is why I enjoy games like that are sandboxes, but you can be analytical about it. Like, yet again, Pokemon. Great. Wow, great segue back into the same thing. I'm getting good at this. Um, I'm not sure if there's really much to say at this point. Except, Rengar needs an upgrade. Those are the few games I'm looking forward to. And, I have that Grave skin. I think that's pretty much it. I'm out of things to talk about. So, if you enjoyed the content provided, leave a like. If you want to stay current, subscribe. And I will talk to you all later.